Hey guys, it's Rosie. Welcome back. Today I'm here with this giant pile of sweater or soon to be sweater that I'm going to be putting together and showing you how I made it. So this is the Harry Styles cardigan by JW Anderson that I'm pretty sure it costs like 1700 bucks if you buy it um, from the designer so I was like no I'm not doing that and also um, I tried to pick colors that were a little bit less obnoxious than the original one I started this cardigan I started knitting it back in November of 2020 it is now May 2021 um, I did take two months off in the middle. Honestly, you could make it a lot faster if you spent more time on it. Now I just have one more piece of ribbing to knit, which I'm going to show you guys how to do that. And I have to knit the bands that go down the front on each side for the buttons. Um, and then finally, I just have to sew everything together. So I did start sewing together. Like here's one of the sleeves, for example. I sewed all of the little patches together whatever they're called the strips of squares together so I do have a bunch of like pieces I will be showing you how to knit every different stitch that's used in this um, I know a lot of people um, crocheted this cardigan but I wanted to do it the traditional way uh, because I know a lot more about knitting than crocheting um, I've been knitting a lot longer so I want to just show you what the main piece looks like so I pinned the collar on with safety pins. I didn't sew it yet because I want to show you guys how I'm doing that. Then here is the sweater. You, can, you can't really see it. It's pretty giant. But um, you guys will be getting a better view of it when I actually try it on. And the first thing I'm going to do is show you guys how to do each stitch. So I think we might start off with just doing the ones that are on the straight needles. So for this whole sweater, I used size 7 needles. Um, because I have a larger knitting handwriting than everybody else or than the pattern suggested I guess. I used mostly the red heart yarn so I think it was just generally medium weight and in the video um, that the, the designer released they suggested to use multiple strands of it. I did not so this sweater is a little bit lighter weight I think than um, was intended but I think that's fine because this thing is giant. So this first one uses the yellow yarn. The first thing you have to do is make a slip knot and then cast on 18 stitches. Just cast on like you're knitting, pull the loop up and over the needle like that. Up and over until you get to 18 stitches. So here are 18 stitches. Um, it's pretty tight so you're generally going to want it to be 14 centimeters wide. I didn't do that this time but I just want to show you what the stitch is. So first you knit and you alternate knitting and purling for the whole row. So you go knit and then you bring the yarn over, purl, and then knit, purl, all the way to the end of the row. So once you get to the end of the row, you're going to go back and do the same thing. So I can see that this first stitch has to be a knit and then a purl, so then I go knit, purl, knit, purl all the way to the end. And then at the end of this row, I will switch which one I do first, so I'll show you guys that in a second. So I finished the second row, now it's time to go back and I'll switch what I did first. So now it's purl, knit, purl, knit, purl, knit all the way to the end. And then I will do that same row again after that to repeat the double moss stitch. Here's what it looks like after I completed the first four rows. So I'm going to show you what it actually looks like on my sweater because this is just a sample. I just wanted to show you guys how to do it. I also want to talk about the single moss stitch, which is the black stitch on this sweater. So with that one, you just do exactly the same thing, except it's one row of knit, purl, knit, purl, and then purl, knit, purl, knit, instead of two of each. So here I'm going to show you what it looks like on my sweater. Here's a little section. This is what the yellow double moss stitch looks like. And then here is the single moss stitch, so it's a little bit more compressed. You can't really see it that well. It just looks exactly like this, except um, with few rows in between. So I'm not going to show you how to do that one because it's basically the same thing. This next stitch is called the reverse B stitch. It's the one that you do in green. The first thing that you do is knit the first row because you can't immediately start the pattern. It doesn't work. So after you've knit the first row like this, then we get started with the actual pattern. So you knit the first stitch, 
and then you do something called knitting one below which is you put your needle into here this little hole that opens up when you spread your needles out put it through here and then pull it through and just pull the loop off the hook that's what makes the little bee design then knit then knit one below down here knit knit one below all the way to the last two stitches so once you get to the last two stitches you just knit them both so for the next row all you do is just knit every stitch so I'll be back once I've done that here's what it looks like right now the next thing that you do is knit the first two stitches in this row and then continue with the knitting one below and knitting one um, this just offsets the pattern so that it's not just repeating every time it offsets it one stitch so here you knit two and then repeat the pattern to the end so knit one knit two and then knit one below here knit and then when you get to the end, turn it around, and then you knit the next row completely. And then after that, I'm going to show you it, but then you just continue these four rows. So you do the first one where you knit the two at the end after doing the knit, knit one below, and then you knit a row, and then you knit the first two, and then knit one below and continue that to the end. And then you knit a row and start over. So I'm going to knit this row and then show you what it looks like. So here's what it looks like now after I did the first four rows plus the first knit row and casting on. So I'm going to show you what it looks like on the sweater. So here's what the stitch looks like. I actually did it inside out. This is on the inside of the sweater because I do like this side better. You can do it either way if you want. But I do believe that this is the side that you are intended to see. As you can see the little like beehives I guess they are. So now I'm going to move on. I'm just going to talk about the garter stitch real quick. This is every row is knit. So I don't want to show it to you guys because I'm guessing you already know how to knit if you've seen the last two squares. You just knit normally for the whole 14 centimeters. So I'm not going to show you how to do that because I'm assuming you already know how to do that. So the next one I'm going to show you is this one and then I will do this one. So I'll be right back once I get that yarn. So this next stitch is called the Jersey Slip Stitch. Um, I already did the first two rows, so I cast on, and then I did one row of knit and one row of purl. Um, I'm not going to show you guys that because I assume you already know how to do that. So the first thing you do is you knit the first stitch. Then here you're going to pull it like you're going to purl, except you just slip it onto the next needle. That's called a slip stitch. Then you knit. So you alternate between knitting and slip stitching down the row until the last two. Once you get to the last two, you just knit both of them. So here's what it looks like right now. It's going to start looking very stretchy as the slip stitches continue on. So after this, you purl one row, and then I'm going to do one more row of the knit and slip stitch just so you guys can see what it looks like, but you just repeat purl and slip stitch and knitting alternating rows. So Here's what it looks like so far. So here's what it looks like after I did the second slip stitch row and I'll show you in a second what it looks like once you do the whole 14 centimeters. So next I'm going to show you the jacquard stitch. I think that's how you say it. Here is what the stitch looks like when it's done and then here's the next one I'm going to show you guys. So this one is a little bit more complicated. You do have to work with two colors of yarn at once as you can see here. So it is kind of interesting but I'm really glad I was able to learn how to do it because I think I'll be able to use this in other projects also. So for this next stitch you have to follow this stitch chart here. I cast on my 18 stitches and it looks like the first stitch here is going to be red. So you have to read it this direction when you're knitting this way and when you're knitting on the back side you read it backwards. So here it appears that I have to do one red stitch here. So one red stitch and then I'll put my needle through and then I have to do black. So I pull in the black by just I just loop it over my needle like that, putting the tail end on the right. Then I pull it through and knit and make sure I am kind of careful about it because it could pull out at this point. So then I knit six more in red. So you want to take them in behind and then you just pull the red over. I try not to get them too twisted behind the project. So knit five, 
six actually, two, three, four, five, six, and then you go through here and then you pull the black back. So you just pull that over one and then you do another six with the red so here's what it looks like and then basically you flip it around and you do the other pattern so you start over here and you do four black so you read it backwards when you're on the purl side so here you're gonna purl because you want your yarn to stay on the same side um, where it crosses back and forth so then you're going to purl four black three red then four more black three more red and four more black so I'm going to do that and then show you guys what it looks like. So here's what it looks like after the second row. You can start to see the pattern coming out. I recommend leaving it pretty loose on the back because if it gets too tight, your square is going to kind of pucker. So we want it to keep nice and stretchy and loose for your sweater. So this is just the start of it. After that, you continue and you knit the next row and you read the chart right to left and then you switch it purl and left to right and so on and so forth and then you repeat the pattern immediately after you finish it um i had to repeat it three times per square but it's going to be different for every person based on your own knitting handwriting so here's what it looks like one more time um i really like the look of this actually it is pretty time consuming though to keep it out and look at it so I would recommend actually printing the pattern I always had it on my phone and it was really annoying to have to keep refreshing my phone and stuff so here's what this one looks like and I do believe that is the last stitch that I have to show you so that is the last stitch I have to show you guys um, right now I'm going to work on my last piece of ribbing which is the center of the back of the sweater um, and that looks like this it's just knit pearl knit pearl um, my handwriting ended up being a lot bigger than what the pattern called for because this is 90 stitches I believe and what this is way too long just for the front left or front right of the sweater for the ribbing so I decided to change it and just do my own so I did two 90 ones and then I'm going to have the seams not line up with the seams on the sides so that's too bad but whatever it works for me so next I'm going to get out my round needles and cast on. I believe it's going to be about 60 stitches, but I'm not sure. So don't quote me on that because everybody's going to be different with this part. Um, I'm not going to show you how to do this stitch though, because you just cast on the allotted amount or however you've calculated and then you knit two, purl two. On the collar, it is knit one, purl one, um, except I did that incorrectly and did knit two, purl two. So I apologize for that, but that is just going to stay that way so I'm going to work on my last piece of ribbing then after that I get to do the button bands and then I'll be done so I am going to work on the ribbing and I'll be back so here I have the buttonhole band you can see the buttonholes here um, I made the other side band first the one that holds the buttons in this blue color and I'm going to attempt to show you how I did it because I didn't follow the pattern so what I did was I cast on seven stitches first and then you slip the first stitch. On the first row you have to um, knit the first six and then purl the last one so that you can get this nice um, like running stitch along the edge. Um, then you slip the first stitch on the second row, knit five and then purl one. So it gives you this look with the two ends with the running stitch on them. Um, you continue to do that, slipping the first stitch and purling the last stitch every row you do. So then, once I got two centimeters in, I made a buttonhole, which is what I'm going to show you how to do in a second. So I'm just going to first show you how to do the regular rows. So first you just slip a stitch, and then you knit five. And then you just purl the last stitch. So once I get to nine centimeters between the beginning of this buttonhole, then I'll start the next buttonhole. So in a few more rows, I will start the next buttonhole and show you guys how to do that. 
So now this is ready to do the next buttonhole. You have to do six buttonholes and you're supposed to have it measure a total of 55 centimeters, but um, mine needs to be 58 to fit my sweater. So first thing you do is you slip the first stitch, then you knit one, and then you knit two together here, which is a little bit tricky. And then you knit two. And then purl the last one. Flip your work around for the next row. Then you slip the first stitch. You knit two here. Then you bring your yarn over to add a stitch here. Knit two more. And then purl the last one. So then you go back to knitting normally, so you slip the first stitch, knit the next five, and then purl the last one. So here you can see the buttonhole emerging. So that's the sixth one. After this I'm going to make sure my work measures two centimeters after the buttonhole, and then um, I'm going to cast off. So I want to show you how this looks different to the one that was described in the pattern. I actually made the button holding band first. Um, this is the back side of it and this is the front side. So it looks pretty much the same. You're using kind of like a modified B stitch, so it's kind of interesting. Um, and this took me a lot longer than doing the button band, just because here I was only knitting and then doing the slips and the pearls on the sides. Um, so I would definitely recommend knitting instead of doing the pattern way. Um, I'm going to put this on my sweater for now. But um, in the future, I might switch it to match this. I don't think they look too different, to be honest, but um, they'll be fine for now. I think I might have to steam this before I put it on to my sweater, though. So next, I'm going to start sewing on the last pieces. Um, while I was away, I connected my sleeves and put on my bottom ribbing. So finally, I have to put these two pieces on and then connect the collar, and then I'll be done. So I'm going to grab my sweater and start putting on the collar and I want to show you guys how I do that. Now I'm going to show you guys how to attach the collar and just generally how I sew stuff on. So here is where the collar goes. I think it's supposed to reach from this corner to this corner over here and I'm going to do just that. So I've got a pretty decent piece of this red yarn here. and. I kind of just like to work with it as I go, so I'm just going to attach it at the corner and see where that takes me. So here, I'm just going to put it right through here. And typically you would sew on the other side of the collar, but the seam kind of looks the same on both sides. So I'm just going to sew on this side so you guys can see it better. So what I'm going to do is just secure it a few stitches and then start to like stretch it and see how generous I need to be um, with like stretching this or stretching this one depending on which one is smaller. It's very forgiving. So I'm just going to go through it's just like a little whip stitch, go through like that and go over again. I try to take two pieces of yarn on either side just so that it doesn't pull and make a hole. So there it just looks like that and I try to go pretty close so that there's no large gaps between both sides. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this off camera but I'm also going to sew on the button bands and I think I'm going to sew those on with blue just because every seam on this is red and I feel like having red going through the blue will look a little weird. So instead of sewing this like a normal seam where you would put like right sides together, although that wasn't the instructions on this sweater, um, you're supposed to put the seams on the outside, but I chose that I like it better looking like this, although you can see a decent amount of the seams. Um, I think I'm going to layer the blue slightly on top of the edge here, just so that it overlaps and the blue doesn't show the seam as much. So I'm going to go finish this and then sew on the button bands and I'll be back. 
So I finished it and drum roll please. Here it is. This sweater is so big and comfortable. It's like a big cozy blanket and I love it. Um, not exactly sure if it was worth six months of my time well like four months working hard on it and like two months of just ignoring it but um it definitely wasn't worth 1700 bucks but i'm really glad i made it this thing is going to it's gonna get me through next winter of course it's now getting really hot out and i have to go take pictures in it and it's like 80 degrees out so i'm gonna be baking but here here's what we have I love it so much. It's so comfortable and baggy and fantastic. There are a few flaws which I want to point out if you're um, going to follow the pattern. First of all, these sleeves literally go down to my knees. Like, here's where my hand ends. So I'm thinking about actually taking off um, one of the rows of squares because they're just so long. Like, I know they're supposed to be big and baggy, but like, they're going to be really giant at all times. Um, another thing I could do would be to either make smaller cuffs or put elastic on here, which I might do as well, um, just to make sure that the sleeves stay up because these <laughs> are going to just be around my knees, like I said. Also, if you're going to um, make the button band, I would not follow the pattern. Um, this is maybe not the best pattern, maybe I didn't do it right, but from my experience, I didn't find it to be the best pattern. Definitely the button bands were not um, very well made, so I would definitely recommend doing it the way that I showed you guys. Also, all of the ribbing was just way too big. It was way too big by like 30 plus stitches per section, so I would definitely recommend um, counting out kind of like trying out like say 90 stitches and then seeing how big that is and then um, basing everything off of that because even everything I did was too big after I scaled it down quite a bit so I would just really recommend testing everything before you commit and make it how it is and then it kind of looks a little weird like mine does there are a few ways that I think this could be improved also I didn't put buttons on yet because I haven't made the trip out to Joanne Fabrics so I will show you guys pictures of what this looks like with buttons later on my social media. Um, so I'm going to try to fit the buttons to the buttonholes and also hopefully I won't get any that are too big for the um, button band because I think it might look a little weird if I have like massive buttons like this big. So here it is. I am going to go outside and take pictures of it so you guys can see it a little better. Here is the work of my last six months. I hope you guys enjoyed. So make sure to follow me on all social media at Rosie Revolts and check out my Etsy shop also at Rosie Revolts and my book at getoutdoorsbook.com and I'll see you guys later. Bye!